So let's have a chat. Let's talk about something that most, oh, the dogs just called to me. Thanks, on cue, shadow as usual. Okay, so let's talk. Let's have a chat about something that most chateau owners do not talk about. I don't think it's sheer avoidance. I think it's just something that's very practical, um, not very glamorous, but it's definitely up there on the radar with what is very important when considering buying any old large house, whether in France or not. And that is, how are you going to heat your house? One of the reasons that we chose this chateau, you know that we fell in love with the land and primarily that was our major concern, but was because we wanted to be a little bit more self-sufficient and this chateau had a massive wood boiler. We have woodlands and so we thought, brilliant, we can supplement some of our heating costs um, with the wood. Uh, alas, for many, many reasons, that was not to be. The wood boiler itself, um, after we uh, moved in, was deemed illegal. Um, we've discovered it had no venting chimney to the outside. It didn't go up the little chimney in the boiler house. The boiler is not efficient. It eats wood up to a cubic meter a day. Um, and we ran it for a total of, or tried to run it for a total of um, two weeks. Add to all that, that the radiators all around the chateau, the plumbing system was so higgledy-piggledy that one radiator would be plumbed downstairs, then it would go straight upstairs through the floorboards to a room, one room, then go across through into um, a different bedroom and then back down again and it would continue doing this. And the radiator pipes that had been put in were th far too um, narrow, the diameter was too small, um, to actually send the water around the chateau effectively. The upshot of it is, is after basically the first, we moved in in December 2020 and by two weeks later, by mid-December, we knew that that was the way we were not going to be able to heat the house. We also have two, or we had two wood burners in the chateau as well. And that is how we heated um, our living space um, for the first year. Those wood burners are absolutely terrible. So you've seen us remove one of them already from the salon. And at the minute, um, I am just helping Julian today uh, with something we'll show you in a moment because um, we are entering into autumn now and autumn has arrived early and it arrived early last year. And we think that we are going to have another bad winter here or cold winter. Um, and generally, before last year, winters here would last about four months, four or five months. Um, you wouldn't really need your heating on until the beginning of November. Um, and then by February, end of February, um, so you'd have November, December, January, February. By the end of February, um, you were just using it as, as supplemental heating because even in January, even last year in the cold winters in January, um, the temperatures during the day can get up to 20, 21, but they fall right back down at night um, to below zero some nights. Hey Julian. Hello. <laughs> what are you doing? I'm hiding. Yeah, it looks like <laughs> it. <laughs> well, we're in September. Yeah. And it's going to be Christmas soon. <laughs> How many days till Christmas? And we've got to make sure that it's nice and clean for Father Christmas to get down. Of course, yeah. yes. <laughs> No, what I'm actually doing is seeing how far I can get a, a certain diameter brush mm -hmm. up the chimney flue um, so that we will then be able to get a chimney liner mm -hmm. popped up there. And it's look, at the moment it's looking good. I've got nine... 0.1 meters worth of um, rods, rods mm. with the it's a 14 stroke 15 centimeter brush attachment mm -hmm. diameter on there. So I'm gonna push it up as far as I can until I meet resistance, and then we'll be able to mm -hmm. know how much um, flexible flue lining we've got. Yeah, we want to put a new wood burning stove in here. But we've been told by um, a builder that because this 
this chimney serves three fireplaces. I've been told that it just gets narrower and narrower as it gets to the top, which I think it does. But that's why we've got the diameter of the chimney sweep head on, which is almost the diameter of the flue liner, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so we're just seeing how far we can actually get up with a flue liner because the builder's proposition, the um, solution is to knock the chimney, the wall, the internal walls out the chimney that I think are there, uh, which are serving the other two fireplaces. And we're just a bit nervous about that. And so we're just taking it upon ourselves again to see what we can do, aren't we? So, right, well, I'll leave you to it and then we'll see how far it goes up then. Okay. Okay, so it's good news. Julian managed to get um, the chimney sweeping rods all the way up, um, which indicates that there is space for a flue liner um, pretty much all the way to the top, which is what we need. So, we are going to attempt to fit the flue liner. And this is one of the reasons we hit pause on the salon because we knew that we would be doing this job um, to uh, see if we can get this chimney functioning properly. I lose my breath whenever I see you You stole my heart, what is it that you do? Much to and froing, we managed to get the flue liner up this narrow chimney, which was great news. You make me smile, what is it that you do? My life was great till you added colours. Like the moon is the snow, we don't care about the others. You said. What are you doing then, Pops? I'm I'm doing the rainbow things. Yeah, what is it? Um, corn. Corn. Do you want me to snip that bit off for you? Okay, I'll do it because these are really sharp. Okay, you should be able to do it easier now. Are we nearly there? Nearly there. It's like opening a present. <laughs> it's like foil. It's like foil a bit, is it? Yeah. <gasps> there we are. That is a beautiful one. I know. <laughs> Let's pull them off. That's it, like that. The wet. Yeah. Well, glass gem sweet corn, this one. Like each little kernel. Let's have a look. Hold it out. Let's have a look. It's a shiny. Yeah, each little kernel is like a little glass gem, isn't it? And and the z z z pearl colours. Pearl colours. Yeah. Yeah, they are a little bit like pearls, aren't they? Yeah. Beautiful. That's it. Yeah, no, what I mean is, yeah, those ones that are unshucked. So when you take all the stuff off of corn, it's called shucking corn. So <laughs> this is a big one. It is a big one. How did you grow it on? Well, the ground grew it, didn't it? And the sun and the water. And a wing. Mm. So do you want to take these to him? Because we just saved, we've saved these ones these for seed. Two. No, I'll get them off there. 
You... No, I want to do. All right. The... Well, we're saving these for seed, aren't we? Yeah. We'll dry the seed out. So, okie doke. All right, so you've come out to help now, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing then? Helping mommy get all this covery thingies off the sweet corn. Yeah, all the wrappers, all the, yeah. the shucking the corn. And we've just found, haven't we, a couple of little baby sweet corn. Yeah, there's yeah. one here. Yeah, this is what happens. It's when you buy baby sweet corn. This is what it is. It's completely undeveloped corn um, that they picked at this stage. Another one. And then what are you doing when you get in the house? You're still doing the... You're still separating them off so we can save the seed. I'm hoping you do the sweet corn now. Okay, well, I'm, I was planting some beetroot, so I, I only came back over because you was doing it. Have you got a lot of sweet corn? A lot of sweet corn kernels? Yeah. Yeah? we got a lot of it now. Okay, so we're going to dry that out. Save some of it for popcorn and some of it for planting next yeah. year, aren't we? Yeah. Because we have a lot of it. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. No, they've been planted a long time ago, haven't they? Let's have a close look then. Actually, see the different colours? Wow. So grey too. There's grey. What colours can you see in the pop in the sweet corn? Um, yellow, yellow bluey. Mm -hmm. They're kind of shiny. Shiny, yeah. And, and lots of pink. Lots of pink, they are. That's what I like. Me pink, too. The pink and the purple ones are the best, aren't they? Yeah, I like I like a uh, 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 ones that I pick better, but oh. I don't want. Well, make sure you pick them nice for the chickens. Yeah. Imagine what they'll be like cooked up next year when we have them next year. It when they're not hard. Yeah, exactly. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.